Yellow again. In the last video, I showed this bottle cap being milled, and in this one, I'm going to show how I powder coated it. As you can see, it's multiple colors, and I, I haven't really seen many videos where people do more than one color of powder coat. The way that I do it is by uh, masking. So there's going to be a focus on masking, and then uh, some general information about powder coating. For the powder coat to adhere, you need to start with a clean part. I'm using Comet here to clean this. Uh, I got the idea to use Comet from a person named Dan Galbart, who has a really awesome series of videos on YouTube on prototyping. I'll link to the specific one on powder coating in the uh, video description. So I'm uh, saving you a little time with the fast forward here. As I get this finished up, you'll notice that I'm holding the bottle cap with a piece of threaded rod. And as you may expect, the goal of the threaded rod is mostly just so I don't have to handle the bottle cap. Um, honestly, this was maybe a little early in the game because I'm about to put a bunch of masking on this. And putting the masking on basically requires a bunch of handling, but this was the only <laughs> this was the only super exciting footage of washing the bottle cap that I that I recorded, so I thought I'd throw it in. After I get it all washed up, I'll take it out to the garage and blow it off with some with some compressed air. I try to take it out there wet and blow it off as quickly as I can. And my goal is to, obviously to make it dry, but also if I let it air dry, I might get water spots and stuff. And any, um, if I do a transparent powder coat, you actually may see the water spot underneath the transparent powder coat. So I get it uh, dried off as, as quickly as I can. I'm going to paint the ball of yarn first. So I'm going to mask off everything except the ball of yarn so that I can powder coat that first. What I'm using here is a stuff called Kapton tape. Uh, K-A-P-T-O-N. That might be a trade name, so uh, it might also be called polyamide tape. I get it on Amazon myself, but uh, I get the impression that they also s might sell it at electronics supply stores. As you can see, it's like a, a thin cellophane-y kind of tape. And it can withstand the, the temperatures that you need to, to use in order to powder coat. I think it might go up to like 600 or something like that, but uh, for what I do for powder coating, I only get it up to 450 Fahrenheit. The tape is not the cheapest thing in the world, so I supplement the, the Kapton tape with this painter's tape. My goal is to mask off the entire bottle cap and then use a hobby knife to cut the mask away uh, from all the areas that I want to paint. When I say hobby knife, I of course mean exacto knife, but I'm actually using Excel brand blades. The Kapton tape cuts pretty easily, but since you're doing it by hand and on a object like this with curves and lots of intricate detail, you end up with a lot of pretty jagged cuts. And of course, if you're cut in a in your mask is jagged the seam between the painted area and the masked area is also going to be jagged that's a problem uh, not only aesthetically but when you're peeling the mask those little the jags will create rip points where when you're peeling the mask up it'll rip uh, pretty easily it's a little annoying but uh, not the end of the world. Works pretty good overall. I didn't actually record any 
a video of myself cutting the mask, but when I did cut it, I used a jeweler's loop and a flashlight to get the best uh, view of it that I could. I figured I wouldn't record any because I don't really have any techniques to share. Here it is, though. Uh, I think it came out pretty good. I did have to put that little patch in the top left corner, and it was a bit of a mistake, but not too bad. This is uh, my powder coating area here. It's uh, it's a box. This is a uh, candy raspberry powder from Eastwood. So I guess I'll uh, kind of talk about my setup here a little bit. This box is totally inadequate. It it keeps some of the powder at bay, but basically it gets all over my garage and it sucks. Um, I really wish I'd I had taken the time to build a box with like filters and and fans and stuff like that to keep the powder at bay. Um, hanging down from the top of the box is this, is a grounding wire, and at the end of the grounding wire is, a, a 632 standoff from a computer, and, um, the little threaded rod from the bottom of the bottle cap will screw into that standoff, and then, therefore, the whole thing will be grounded. The, uh, other end of the wire is just basically shoved into uh, the grounding lug of an outlet next to the box there. It's, it's pretty ghetto. So uh, you may have noticed that I'm wearing gloves here. I don't know if they're necessary. Uh, I don't know how dangerous powder coating is. Um, it seems like various sources on the internet have uh, con conflicting opinions about just how dangerous it is. As you may hear uh, of my breathing, I'm wearing a, a respirator kind of thing, a gas mask looking thing. So more or less, this is it. You hold down the button, spray some powder out, and uh, it sticks to the metal that's grounded. It's pretty easy, so all that rigmarole is for all for just that 30 seconds of actually spraying powder coat there. Once you get it on the part, it actually stays on pretty good. If you were to brush against it, you'll you'll knock the powder off. You, basically, any physical contact, any mechanical force on the powder will. I'll knock it off, but you could probably grab that threaded rod and kind of wave, wave the bottle cap around without losing too much of the powder. So I'm just taking off the painter's tape here because uh, it's about to go into the oven and I don't want it getting scorched in there or like leaving glue residue or whatever might happen. Remember that patch I mentioned earlier. Uh, right about pretty soon here is when it's when it almost bites me in the ass. I, uh, I put the tab on in a little bit of a rush and I put it so it was stuck over the painter's tape. <laughs> you know to save five seconds I stuck it over the painter's tape. And right here, I have to kind of peel it up a little bit in order to get all the painter's tape out. And if I think I, I think if I had to peel that all the way off, I probably would have had to have resprayed this, this part. Alrighty, I uh, got it screwed down into my little baking fixture there, which is just a failed, failed uh, group of bottle caps bottoms, I guess. The oven's preheated to 450. Well, that's what I set it to. I'm not sure what it is in there. I should probably get a thermometer inside the oven at some point. I keep a uh, stopwatch there just so I can know how long it's been in the oven. 
Eastwood recommends that you watch the powder and wait for it to flow out. So it's been in there about seven minutes now. And I'm checking it to see if it looks like it's got a liquidy texture. I also take the temperature. Um, another powder coat supplier that I've used called Prismatic Powders. Their directions start when the part has reached temperature. I get the impression that's kind of the normal way. I'm not sure why Eastwood does it differently. So I guess I uh, thought it looked good enough, so I start the timer. Eastwood recommends a cure time of 20 minutes at 400 degrees. That's for most of their powders. Uh, they recommend a different temperature and timing for the clear coats. And here it is, uh, 20 minutes later. Let's pull it out and set it on top, let it cool down. These guys take about 30 minutes to cool, but obviously in a different environment and different parts, uh, the timing is going to vary. This candy raspberry is transparent, and I think that really accentuated the little peaks and valleys of the ball of yarn. It came out really good, in my opinion. And uh, a little while later. I'm always a little worried that the powder coat is going to be pulled off with the mask a little bit, uh, particularly at the edges, but so far it really hasn't been much of a problem. I'm going to skip skip ahead here. Uh, this is the second color. This is just the tips of the needles. This is maroon. Not that uh, you can see it all that well, but this is Eastwood's maroon, that is. I did a full cure on that candy raspberry. And I did a full cure because uh, sometimes what happens if, if you have a mask on top of partially cured powder that powder will seep into the little folds and creases of the mask and then get cured in the shape of the folds and creases. And, uh, you know, you obviously don't want fold and crease shapes in your powder coat because that equates to different thicknesses and um, you can really see it in reflections and stuff. The maroon is fully cured as well. The third and final color is Illusion Malbec. This one's from Prismatic Powders. Prismatic Powders has a, an awesome selection of colors, and they have a, a lot of crazy colors and stuff, too. I, I definitely recommend checking them out. As you can see, I've got uh, everything masked off except for the main body of the bottle cap. And to complete the mask, I'm going to plug up the seven magnet holes in the bottom. This uh, Illusion Mulbeck is a pretty crazy color. Um, as you'll see in a second, when you shoot it, it's basically a kind of a purple color. Then later you'll see when you bake it, it turns, uh, I'd say, kind of dark bluish. 
maybe kind of blackish blue. And then when you add clear coat on top, it turns into this really dark, cool red color. Uh, you probably saw it at the beginning of the video. But if you look at this color here and uh, compare it to what it looks like at the beginning of the video, it's kind of hard to believe that you're looking at the same bottle cap. Getting the uh, inside slash bottom of this bottle cap to get some paint on it is pretty tricky. It, uh, I guess the shape of it forms a little bit of a Faraday cage and that prevents the uh, electrically charged particles from entering that part of the bottle cap. So this is sort of a nerve-wracking part. You've got to get this uh, completely covered bottle cap into the oven without, without knocking it or hitting it against anything. So all those little plugs on the bottom, I personally like to take them out before baking. And the reason for that is even though the plugs are made of silicone, they get a little bit of powder coat on them, and when it bakes, you get sort of a, a little bit of a silicone plug-shaped outline around your whatever holes that you've plugged up. So uh, I pull all the plugs out, and I use pretty, pretty extreme caution while doing this, because... What I've found happens is if I grit, if I think I have the the plug in the pliers, and if I'm pulling down, but the plug doesn't come up, my uh, natural response is to push the pliers back up into the bottle cap. And of course, when I do that, I touch the powder, and when I touch the powder, it gets rubbed off. So there's been many a time where like. I'm taking these plugs out, and I end up ruining the powder coat job because of messing up one of these plugs. It's really annoying. Uh, there's, there's really not a step along the way where I haven't ruined a bottle cap. And, sorry, actually I should say ruined a powder coat job. Thankfully, when the powder is uh, still powder... You just blow it off with an air hose and start over, but you've wasted a lot of time at that point. Alrighty, it's uh, been in the oven at 400 for a while here, but I'll be damned if it'll actually go up to 400 degrees. And as I mentioned, the prismatic powder instructions tell you to wait until it gets up to temperature before uh, you start the cure process or the cure timer. But I guess I got tired of waiting basically and I started a time. This particular uh, color takes 12 minutes of curing time. Okay, I uh, let it go it's 12 minutes and decided to give it an extra minute. Because I sort of started the timer maybe earlier than I should have. Still doesn't seem to be saying that it's 400 degrees, though. This uh, toaster oven <laughs> really isn't the best. You know, it's not a powder coating oven, it's a toaster oven. A cheap one at that. Check out that color. I guess maybe it's not as blue as I thought it was, but certainly not as purple as when it went in.
In a moment, when I uh, hold the bottle cap up to the camera, you'll see that uh, it's done being painted, essentially, but the seams between the colors are not as crisp as I'd like it to be. In a moment, I'm going to put it back into the mill and uh, run a cleanup operation on it. When I put a bottle cap onto the fixture here, I actually use the reflection of the magnet holes to line up the bottle cap with the pins on the fixture plate. I then have to press down in order to seat the bottle cap on the pins. I unfortunately can't use the air for this because sometimes it'll seat down at a slightly crooked angle and then it'll just be on top of the pins, which obviously is bad. This is the cleanup operation here. Uh, I took the audio out because it's so <laughs> monotonous and uh, I cut it pretty short. In a second I'm going to jump to the completed cleaned up bottle cap. Alrighty, I'm going to end this video here. There's the bottle cap after having the three different colors of powder coat put on it. The next video is going to be basically just putting on clear coat on the top.